There's something just so right about a beefy engine in a tiny car. The Abarth 595 and 695 models take that formula and really ramp up the details. Whichever one you choose, you get a 1.4 litre T-Jet turbo engine driving the front wheels in a lightweight body that spells fun with a huge F. The Abarth brand might be a bit of a mystery to some younger buyers who won't remember it being plastered over hot fiats of the 70s and early 80s. In case you were wondering, the Abarth name has been owned by Fiat since 1971, but it was originally the racing team of Carlo Abarth, founded in Turin in 1949. A long and illustrious competition history lent the Scorpion badge quite some kudos, and those of a certain age will go a little dewy-eyed to remembering cars like the Autobianchi A112 Abarth and the Fiat 131 Abarth. In later years, Fiat used the badge sparingly, though it appeared on some fairly undistinguished vehicles like the Fiat Stilo. These days, Abarth is a separate division housed in the old Mirafiori factory. It's responsible for the Abarth 595 and 695 models we're going to look at here. Probably the best cars to wear the badge for many a year. In the great scheme of all things hot hatch, the 165 horsepower output you get with an Abarth 595, like the one we're trying here, isn't a huge hill of beans. You can get hatches with more than double that power output, but as recent developments in sports car manufacture has shown, more power doesn't always equate to more fun. If you really feel the need for it in an Abarth, the next stage up lies with 695 series variants, which boast an uprated 180 horsepower output. Flog this 165 horsepower version off the line, and the 1.4 litre T-Jet turbocharged petrol engine will deliver 62 miles an hour to you in a mere 7.3 seconds, en route to a top speed of 134. Thanks to the recently updated Garrett Turbo, there's decent pulling power through the gears too, 230 newton meters of it from just 3,000 RPM, which means that 50 to 75 miles an hour takes only 7.8 seconds. In the 180 horsepower 695 derivative, those figures improve to 6.7 seconds and 140 miles an hour. That should be quick enough to get your jollies. Usable power in a small package, brilliant. The engine uses an overboost function which modulates the amount of available turbo boost and is activated by a Scorpion button on the centre console. Carried over from the original Abarth 500 model is torque transfer control which helps to improve the transfer of torque to the driven wheels. Here we're trying an F595C variant with a 5-speed manual gearbox. Urban dwellers also have the option of specifying an MTA paddle shift 5-speed automatic. Beyond the city limits, as you'd hope, this little Latin micro hot hatch grips through the turns tenaciously, helped by bespoke Coney rear suspension. It stops arrestingly too, thanks to Abarth's special high-performance braking system, which offers 284mm front and 240mm rear ventilated discs. Another part of the fun of owning an Abarth lies with the sound it makes, and if you choose either this F595 variant or the top 695 Competizioni version, you can maximise that thanks to the inclusion of a record Monza Sovraposto exhaust system with four vertically stacked tailpipes controlled by an exhaust valve. This is activated by the Scorpion button on the centre console and allows the driver to choose between the sounds of a gentleman driver and Abarth's more traditional deeper roar. You'll love it. We should perhaps end by talking specifically about the roof of the convertible version we're trying here. It's certainly nice that you don't have to slow right down to pedestrian speeds to operate it. Instead, it's possible to electrically open or close the six-foot fabric top at speeds of up to 37 miles an hour, moving through three preset positions via these upper buttons near the rear view mirror. When it's open, you get the opportunity of a tan without being blown about. 
though if you port the top in its halfway position, the bulging creases create plenty of wind judder that's only partly alleviated by the optional wind deflector you can mount behind the front seat headrests. When it's shut, standards of refinement are, rather impressively, almost identical to those of the ordinary fixed top model. It's hard to go too far wrong with a donor vehicle as pretty as the Fiat 500, but making it look convincingly mad and purposeful is an altogether tougher task. Abarth has managed it though, whether you choose this car in fixed top or as here in convertible form. The Abarth visual changes are just enough to change the basic Fiat 500's essential character from something a little bit cutesy and twee to something more decidedly malevolent in its intent. Here we've got the motorsport themed F595 variant with its emotive vertically stacked record Monza Sovraposto exhaust system tailpipes. The special F595 badge pays homage to Formula 4 for whom Abarth is the exclusive engine supplier in Italy, Germany and the UK. You could argue that the base 595 model with its 16 inch wheels is probably all you need, but almost all customers pay more for either a 595 Turismo, this F595, or one of the top two 695 variants, all of which sport larger 17 inch rims. Across the range, the door handles are satin chromed, and when specifying your car, you'll find that little finishing touches make a lot of difference, like the rally blue door mirrors and black brake calipers we have here. Let's jump in and retract the powered roof on this convertible model. Unlike the fabric tops on early fast Fiat 500 convertibles, this double layered hood won't leak or flap about. It also features a proper glass rear window and is available in a choice of colors, so is fully personalizable. Get comfortable, look around, and it all feels a world away from the shopping runabout donor car. You press on silver branded pedals, grasp a leather stitched silver faced gear knob, and feel your nether regions clamped into place by grippy black sports seats. Appropriately, you clasp a chunky three spoke flat bottomed wheel with a race style 12 o'clock marker and through it view Abarth branded dials of the virtual sort displayed on a seven inch instrument screen. Another seven inch screen decorates the center of the gray dash. This Uconnect display featuring audio streaming and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring as standard. Avoid base trim and you get navigation too. Issues such as they are do of course replicate those you'd find in an ordinary 500. The seat is set rather high. The infotainment screen attracts reflections, particularly in the convertible variant when the roof's down. And the narrow pedal box might be a bit tight for those over familiar with the offerings of Colonel Sanders. It's impossible to be irritated with this car for long though. It has so much infectious joie de vivre. Time to move on to the rear seat. Now, given that the external dimensions of this car are so short, you won't be expecting to find much room here, and there isn't. Larger adults will find their heads brushing the roof when the top's raised, and will need to make full use of the elbow cutouts indented into the side panels. Most, though, will find the space provided just about sufficient for two people on short to medium journeys, and it'll probably be fine for children. Let's finish with a look out back. Now, on this convertible version, what draws the eye back here when the roof is down like this are the substantial folds of fabric that create well-publicized issues when it comes to rearward vision. At least, though, they don't very much impinge on boot space, the 182-litre capacity of this Cabrio being virtually the same as you get on the alternative fixed-top model. Compare that to the paltry 160 litres you'd get roof down with a pricier drop-top Mini. 
The boot lid itself does, it's true, have a pretty small opening, but at least you can use it when the soft top's fully down like this. The electrics are automatically lifting the retracted hood bundle a few centimetres upwards when the boot release is activated. So you can raise the luggage door properly. Should you need more carriage capacity, the rear seat backs fold forward to increase the space available to 520 litres. At the time of this test in autumn 2022, prices for the 595 models were starting at just under £22,500, which gets you the standard 165 horsepower 595 variant. There's a £2,650 premium for this Cabriolet body style. The 165 horsepower Turismo and F595 version start at just under £23,500. Both variants available with the option of paying around £1,300 more for MTA auto transmission. The base 595 comes with 16-inch alloy wheels, a double chrome exhaust, front fog lamps, bespoke Coney rear suspension and Abarth's special high-performance braking system. The 595 Turismo adds larger 17-inch wheels, navigation, automatic climate control and black or brown leather upholstery. More extrovert sorts will prefer this motorsport-themed F595 variant, which gains a throaty record Monza Sovra Posto exhaust system. If no kind of ABBA 595 is quite fast enough for you, you'll be looking at the even more focused 180 horsepower 695 Abarth models priced as we filmed in the 25 and a half to 31 and a half thousand pound bracket and offered in standard Turismo and Competizione forms. The 695 and Turismo versions get a record Monza exhaust upgraded to the aforementioned record Monzo Sovra Posto setup in the Competizione version. All Abarth 695 variants have 17-inch wheels, an Alcantara upholstered cockpit and race-style Sabelt fabric front seats with matte grey shells. The 695 Turismo adds leather upholstery and a sunroof on the fixed top variant and the Competizione adds a mechanical limited slip differential for extra cornering traction and inside red stitching and carbon shells for the front seats. As we filmed, Abarth was also offering a short-run Tributo 131 Rally version of the 695, priced at £33,245. The idea with this model was to mark the 40th anniversary of the classic Abarth 131 Rally model's final race. There aren't many options, basically just Zen and headlamps and a Beats Hi-Fi system upgrade. Across the 595 and 695 model range, safety kit betrays the basic decade-old design, so there's virtually none of the modern camera-based drive assist kit that owners of a modern Super Mini would now expect. But you do get twin front, side and curtain airbags, plus a driver's knee bag. There's ESC stability control, plus anti-lock brakes with HBA or hydraulic brake assistance to help in panic stops that'll be advertised to following motorists by automatically activating hazard warning lights. You should find that day-to-day -day running costs won't break the bank as its 1.4-litre T-Jet power plant is one of those modern turbocharged engines that actually returns really good fuel economy if you're not constantly making the turbo do manic hamster wheel impressions. The quoted economy figure for a manual Abarth 595 series fixed top model is up to 42.2 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 152 grams per kilometer of CO2. For this manual 595 series convertible, the figures are up to 41.5 mpg and up to 155 grams per kilometre of CO2, with emissions pegged at between 156 and 152 grams per kilometre. For the 695 series manual fixed top and convertible, the figures are the same, up to 40.9 mpg and 156 grams per kilometre. Whichever Abarth model you choose, even around town, you should find you can manage over 30 mpg. 
Residual values will be good if previous hot versions of the Fiat 500 are anything to go by. Independent experts reckon that after 48 months use of this F95 with a 6,000 annual mileage, you'd still see 9,513 pounds back from it. Reliability seems to be improving too after teething troubles with early cars. There are around 100 UK Abarth dealers and servicing is every year or 9,000 miles, whichever comes first. And Abarth offers a three-year easy care servicing package for around £400. Insurance for the 595 series models varies between 27 and 28D, while for the 695 series variants it's up at Group 31D. You get the usual three-year Fiat warranty with three years of roadside assistance. Abarth has hit this nail squarely on the head. If you want the most stylish and funky warm hatch on the market, this is unquestionably it. Yes, these 595 and 695 series models are aging a bit now, but they both still look great and remain quick enough to entertain, yet not so overblown that the available performance brings with it massive bills. Hotter versions of the Mini come close, but this Abarth feels that bit more exclusive and race ready. Of course, there will be some who sniff at the relatively modest power outputs of the old tech T-Jet engines, but these people ignore the fact that extra power would probably ruin this car's delightful handling balance. If you agree, then you're not short of choice here. Hard top or soft top, manual or MTA paddle shift transmission, and in the model range, base 595, one of the Turismos or the track style F595 or 695 Competizione variants. If you want a rather unique fast hatch that's aged remarkably little and which you can still use around town, then this little Latin pocket rocket might still cast its spell on you. It's just the sort of car Carlo Abarth would have liked. Mm -hmm.